G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this video, we're going to be looking at the high lift jack off-road kit. So this is essentially the winching kit for the high lift jack. Now, we're gonna do a couple of mods to it because, well, as you know, I can't leave well enough alone. But first up, let's have a look at the contents. Now, this is just a standard kit. And in the standard kit comes a tree trunk protector. Allegedly, it's rated for five ton. And we've got a couple of hooks. Now, these are meant for 3.8 and they're grab hooks, grade 70 grab hooks. We've got two lengths of chain, and this is also 3.8 chain, and we'll get onto the chain in a minute. Comes with a three and a quarter ton, I think it is, bow shackle. Now, this is for attaching to the bottom of the standard on the high lift. And this is for attaching to the nose of the high lift. Also comes with a handy bag, but in my experience, these eventually wear out. A couple of nuts and bolts and whatnot. A pair of gloves and for those people who aren't blokes, because as you know, we don't read manuals, a set of instructions. Righto, so let's get into the modifications. Okay, so the high lift jack winching kit uses 3.8 chain. Now, my drag chain is eight mil, or next size down. Now, the reason I use eight mil instead of 3.8 chain is it's a lot lighter. 3.8 chain is roughly about 10 mil. Now, the 3.8 chain has a lashing capacity because remember it's meant for tying things down on the back of trucks, of six ton. And your eight mil chain has a lashing capacity of 3.8 ton. Now your high lift jack has a shear bolt, so it has overload protection. And your overload protection on the high lift jack is 3.2 ton roughly, or 7,000 pounds. So as long as the working load which is 3.8 ton, exceeds the shear bolt capacity in the high lift jack, which is 3.2 ton. As far as I'm concerned, that's a safe conversion. So what we're going to do is we've got our 3.8 chain here and we've got Maddie's drag chain here. So that's nine meters of eight mil chain. And we're going to take the grab hook off the end and we're going to swap out the 3.8 chain for eight mil chain, so let's get into that. So we're just gonna cut two links. Now there is a little complication because the 3.8 chain is designed to fit in the standard fitting and the nose fitting, but the eight mil chain doesn't. So what we're going to have to do is use a couple of one ton bow shackles to get around that. So we just line them up, make sure our safety squints are engaged and we'll cut them open. One down, one to go. Okay, now onto the assembly. So we've got our two eight mil pieces of chain and we've put two bow shackles on there and they're just one ton bow shackles. One ton bow shackles, they're designed for overhead lifting and they have a factor of safety or an FOS of six in Australia. So this will be able to take a six ton load before it breaks. So that's more than enough and it's in excess of where a high lift will break. So that's fine. So we've got our short one and our long one here and we have to join them up to the bases. And the reason we put the bow shackle in, like I said before, is so it can fit in there. So we actually need the short one onto the base piece. And we'll just put the bolt in through there. Might we need a little bit of percussive maintenance. There we go. And 
and we'll just screw him down. Okay, so we'll just give it a final tension up. And of course, all this stuff being American designed and made, it's all in Freedom Units or Imperial, and this is 916. Okay, so that one's tightened up. And now just for the lifting nose piece. Time. <laughs> anyway, all right. So we've got the chain now mounted to the nose lifting piece. And this bolt here just functions so it doesn't slip off the nose. All we have to do now is mount the 8mm grab chain hooks here. And you'll notice these are winged. So I'm not sure if you can see that there. They have wings there. And that means it can take the full weight of the chain. So when you shorten the chain using a grab hook, in this case the 8mm uh, grab hook, you don't actually compromise the lashing capacity or the lifting capacity of that chain. Once we put the shear pin through, just pop the split pin in. That's one done. Now to the second one. And the shear pin's in there now, so we're ready to go with that one. Now one thing I didn't mention was the cotter pin. This cotter pin comes in the kit, so if you have the cast or the standard version of the high lift jack, you can take the base on and off, which is always a good thing. Sometimes you need the base spun around one way, sometimes you need the base spun around the other way. So it comes in handy for not only winching, but for actually using the high lift jack as well. But you need to get the base on and off when you're doing winching so you can put the foot on here. So now we've done all the modifications. Let's head over to the hill, get one of the cars stuck and winch it up. Okay, we're stuck, so we need to get it out. Okay, well, Matty got his 80 series stuck, so we're going to get it out now. Now, before we started rolling the camera, we actually secured his vehicle to a tree. So we've got a tree trunk protector. We've got a four and three quarter ton bow shackle here. The grade 70 chain eight mil that you saw before, and that's to attach to his passenger side recovery point. Now, the reason we're using the passenger side, of course, is if you're only using one of the recovery points out of the two, you prefer the passenger side, because if anything recoils and the driver happens to be in the vehicle, then it'll recall towards the passenger side as opposed to the driver's side. Rightio, now we've chocked it, the park brake's on, even though it's an 80 series and they're pretty much painted on. And now we're going to take the chain off. And we're going to attach the high lift. You notice we're screwing down, we don't screw up, so screw down all the way, and then we back it off half a turn. We'll head down the other end of the high lift, and we'll have a look. Okay, now at the business end of the high lift, we'll attach the bits and pieces here. So this is your lifting chain, and we're going to attach that to the nose. And just quickly attach that to the nose there. Then we need to remove the base. And this is the cotter pin I was speaking about before. Take the cotter pin out. Remove the base. Put your cotter pin back in. Otherwise you will lose it, especially if you're doing this in sand. And we'll just place him to the side. Then we need to put our standing chain on. Simply goes over to the bottom. Now 
and we just need to tension him up a bit. Okay, now we've attached our working chain and our standing chain there secured to our high lift. And our high lift is secured to the tree trunk protector. We can put our grab hook onto our chain that's attached to our vehicle. Now when you attach grab hooks to chains, if you have a look at the chain, they're made of pieces of wire, thick wire, and there's a weld at the top there. So when you place a chain in, hook's always to the top, and you place your chain, the bite of the hook, and that's the bottom here, away from the weld. Now, to avoid winching too much, put a bit of tension on the chain. Run this down as far as possible. And we're all hooked up. Now we can put a bit of tension on with the high lift. Now you might notice that the tree trunk protector is actually a little bit further up the tree than it would be if I was using, let's say, a normal electric winch. And the reason for that is we need to keep the mechanism off the ground. So let's put a bit of tension on there. It's already in the raising position. And usually you first run through it's just taking the slack out of everything. Okay, now we've got a bit of tension on the system. It's not going anywhere. We'll go back down to the car, we'll take it out of park, and we can carefully take the park brake off as well, so it's ready to start winching up. And we'll put Matt into the driver's seat. Okay, so I've got Matt in the car, with his foot on the brake, and I'm just going to confirm on the radio that he's right to go. So Matt, just confirming you're right to go. Yeah, Roger, right, I'm in neutral, handbrake off, foot on the brake. Yeah, Roger, right, right, that'll start uh, winching. If you need any, if you need to stop at any time, mate, just sing out on the radio. Yeah, Roger. Right. Okay, let's start winching. Now, you'll be able to see I'm using the extended handle here. Now, if you haven't seen the extended handle in action before, click the link above and check out part one. Okay, let's get into the winching. There's going to be a bit of tension on it because he's stuck on a bit of a ledge. Okay, so there's a fair bit of tension there, more than I'd be comfortably able to shift by myself for an extended period of time. So I've actually extended the handle and we'll give that a go. That's much easier. Let's get it back into it. Okay, so we've taken the extension handle out and now we're going to reset the rigging. And to do that, we'll grab our standing chain we move that as far down as possible. It's gonna to have to be that one there. And then we put this high lift jack into lowering. And we just lower it onto that standing chain. Coming on to tension now. Move the lifting head all the way down to the bottom. Re-engage the reversing latch so it's in the lifting position. And then move this further down 
than when they're standing Chinese. And then we start the process all over again. Coming on to tension. There's a fair bit of tension there. I might pop the other handle in. Okay, we're back into it. So we successfully hand winch mat using a high lift, probably only a car length, or not even. And we got him into a position where he could easily drive out. And we've got Matt out, and he's just to the right of your screen over there. Now, the vehicle, Matt's set up for touring, and his car would weigh in the vicinity of about three tonne. Okay, and on that hill, the recovery load would have been roughly in the vicinity of about a tonne, or maybe a tonne and a half. Something that could easily be handled with a high lift jack. Though the extension handle made it considerably easy. Now, if you've gotten yourself mired properly, perhaps you're in a bog hole, or really stuck on a hill, you're going to have to reduce the recovery loads. Now, if you're stuck in a bog hole, or maybe in sand, you can use a shovel to reduce the recovery load, or Perhaps you can use a snatch block. Now, traditionally with an electric winch, you'd run from the vehicle to the anchor point, be it a tree or another vehicle, and back to the vehicle again. But this time, we go from the anchor point or from the tree down to the vehicle through a snatch block and then back up to the tree. Now, that'll almost half the recovery load. But remember, you'll only get half as far each time you travel the standard. Now, that's with a traditional snatch block. If you're using the new style snatch ring, as opposed to snatch block, the ones you use with soft shackles, well, it's not gonna be quite as efficient. Now, if you wanna know more about snatch blocks versus snatch rings, click the link in the description or the link above. Now, if you like this video, guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. If you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Twice. Whoops. <laughs>